buried in the something. everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my March wrap-up for 2023. I am well aware that it is pretty much the end of April. Am I sorry? No. Am I just getting motivation to do this because my mother said I had to? Uh, yes. It's fine though. We're here on my lunch break and we're gonna film this real quick. I ended up reading a total of 11 books so I will be splitting it up into two parts because you know your girl rambles a lot so part two will be up eventually. Who knows when with my timeline at this point. But without further ado, let us get started. The first book I read was The Buried and the Bound by Rochelle Hassan. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So this follows Aziza, who is the only known hedge witch of her town. She spends her nights patrolling the border between the fairyland and her town in order to keep her town safe. It also follows Leo, who was cursed a year ago to forget his true love once he turned 16. Leo enlists the help of Aziza to break his curse in in exchange for help on her patrols. Along the way they meet Tristan who is a young necromancer who is working for an old hag who wants to steal Aziza's magic. They decide that they are going to work together in order to break Leo's curse and bring the hedge witch down for good and it's like the story of that. I ended up listening to this one on audiobook and it had multiple narrators which I really enjoyed. I will admit that it did take me a little while to get into this book. I did feel like it dragged a little bit in the beginning. I think that the character development was really well done, especially with Aziza. I loved how no-nonsense and fierce she was, especially when protecting the ones she loved. Leo was probably my favorite of the three main characters. I just think that he was so sweet and caring towards literally everybody. Tristan I wasn't the biggest fan of in the beginning, but he did end up growing on me in the end. I especially liked the group dynamic of these three main characters. I think that they had great found family vibes, which I am a sucker for in books. I was equally invested in all three of their points of views and I do think that their adventures together were really fun to follow. This is a series that I think I will continue but I also won't be super upset if I don't. It's like a average read for me so I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next I read Never Coming Home by Kate Williams. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows a group of 10, 21 and under influencers who were handpicked by Unknown Island to attend their first exclusive retreat. When they arrive, they quickly realize that things aren't exactly what they seem as they begin to be picked off one by one while the population of the world watches on social media. This has such unlikable characters, but I personally think that that made this story so much better. I really enjoyed it. I was hooked from the very beginning of this murder mystery trying to figure out who the killer was and the motives behind each influencer and if they could be the ones who were doing the deed. I really liked how there was literally no escape for the victims and they were just kind of waiting around to see who was going to be the next victim. I will say that some of the ways that the influencers are murdered are pretty gruesome, so if you have a weak stomach, maybe avoid this book. The reason I didn't give it a 5 stars uh, was the ending. I just found it to be very underwhelming. I didn't see it coming, which was nice, but I can't say I necessarily enjoyed what the ending was. You're gonna have to read it to find out what that is, but yeah, it ended up making me drop a star and I ended up giving this book a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up I have What Have We Done by Alex Finley. I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Jenna, Donnie, Ben, Art, and Nico, who were five members of a group home called Savior House when they were younger. When girls began going missing, the house ended up being shut down, separating these five teenagers from one another. As adults, they've gone on to live pretty successful lives, but they are brought back together after the death of Ben and they quickly realize that somebody is trying to kill them because of a secret that they have been hiding for 25 years and it's the story of that. I don't know what it was about this book but I could not get into it. I was invested enough in the story to keep reading because I wanted to know what they were hiding but then when it was revealed what the secret was it was so underwhelming. I was definitely disappointed. The story is told in dual timelines, the past and the present. I was definitely more interested in the past and what happened at Savior House. I listened to this one on audio and it had multiple narrators for the characters which I think definitely helped me a little bit because like I said I struggled with this quite a bit so having those extra voices kind of made it a little bit more tolerable but yeah I ended up giving it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It wasn't my cup of tea. 
Next up we have The Davenports by Crystal Marquis. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. So this follows Olivia and Helen Davenport who are part of a very affluent black family whose father escaped slavery and started a carriage company of his own in Chicago. Olivia spends her days shopping with her best friend Ruby while Helen would rather spend her days in the garage fixing cars with her brother John. The story is basically following the two girls trying to navigate life and how they fit into society. I enjoyed this for the most part. I think that at times it dragged so much, but then other times it skipped over a lot of things that could have been explored more. This was apparently based loosely on a real family, so I was a little let down when it had such a heavy focus on the romance rather than the historical aspects of this family. I liked the four main characters with Amy Rose being my favorite. She was the girl's childhood friend turned maid. I just think her story was the most compelling out of the four. Helen was my second favorite. I really liked how she wanted to follow her own path. I wasn't overly invested in Ruby or Olivia's stories, although I didn't not enjoy them. I thought that all the romances were very similar in the way that they unfolded, so that was a little bit disappointing because it didn't really feel like there was any variance whatsoever. I was also a little disappointed with the ending. I will admit I did not know that this was a series going into it, so I thought it was a standalone, so being left with so many unanswered questions was a bit of a shock to me, so that kind of brought my enjoyment down because I expected a clear finish, and I didn't get it, so I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. And the last book I'm going to talk about because my neighbor decided to start mowing his lawn right now is The Golden Spoon. This is by Jessa Maxwell and I ended up giving this a 5 out of 5 stars. I ate this shit up. So this story takes place during the filming of the 10th season of Bake Week, which is a baking show to determine the best baker and it takes place in the old gothic mansion of the show's host named Betsy Martin. Each contestant brings their own drama and backstory along with them, and then somebody turns up dead, and people start pointing fingers at which contestant might be the killer, and it's like the story of that. Ever since I read Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly and The Romance Recipe by Ruby Barrett, I have been on the hunt for another baking slash cooking reality show story, and this one did not disappoint. I really enjoyed it. The chapters were extremely short, which definitely helped with the flow of this story. It definitely kept me intrigued and wanting to know more. I was so happy when the competition aspect of the story was not lost in this. With the other two books, it kind of took a back burner to the romance, which this one didn't really have any romance. It was more the mystery, but I loved how there was a saboteur in the mix, and we never got to find out who it was until that final reveal. There are seven point of views in this, which I thought were all really well done. Learning the backstory of each and every character was so great. I was fully invested in every single one of them. I loved trying to figure out who the murderer was because everybody had a motive and they could have been it. I also felt pretty satisfied with the ending, which although it was predictable, it was still a lot of fun to get to that point. I just think it tied together really well. I ended up giving it 5 out of 5 stars. I really like this one. I definitely recommend it if you're into a slower murder mystery. Alright everybody, so those were the first five books that I read for the month of March. 2023. My part two will be up whenever it is up. I'm sorry. I know I'm late. My April TBR will be an end of April TBR because, uh, like I said, we're very behind. But let me know down below if you have read any of these books, what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!